Hello, welcome to this video. This is going to be the second part in the instructions and the guideline for how to buy a computer in 2022. So let's begin. So I have a little guidebook, a little PDF guidebook. It's the second uh, part. Um, and the title is the same as the first part, which was a free guide to buying a computer in the year 2022. So for those of you that don't know, for us to start, um, if you did not see this, the first part of this, um, of this guide, in this book right here, in this ebook, I have provided links to part one. Uh, I've provided the PDF version. Um, I've also provided the video version that's on YouTube and on Facebook. So you can also download this uh, guidebook free of charge. Um, I will provide the link to this PDF guidebook in the description of this video, both in uh, YouTube and in Facebook. So, as in the other series, the first series, um, what we'll be going over today is some possibilities that you may want to consider when buying a computer. Uh, you'll want to um, certainly buy additional equipment that doesn't come standard with your computer, such as USB cables, maybe some extra power cords, maybe some uh, adapters and such. Um, and the reason why you'll want to buy this is because that type of equipment doesn't come standard with most computers. Uh, that's extra and that's stuff that you'll need to buy. But maybe a lot of uh, new users don't always consider it when they buy a computer system. So we'll go over a few more steps here that we may have or may not have went over in part one. Um, so. Like the first thing you'll want to consider, or one of the things that you'll want to consider is, is the computer that I'm considering buying or that I want to buy, is it, um, is it upgradable? Is it easy to upgrade? Is it possible to upgrade it? Uh, some computers, systems that you buy may not be easy or may not be possible to upgrade it. Um, whether it's a laptop, desktop, or uh, a tablet or even uh, a cell phone. Some computers are easier to update and upgrade than others. Uh, traditionally, even in today's uh, era, uh, a desktop is usually going to be easier to upgrade than a laptop. Uh, with a desktop, you can uh, upgrade the CPU, which is otherwise known as the processor. Uh, that's going to be easy to upgrade, uh, as well as the memory is going to be easy to upgrade. Now, you can upgrade these things in the laptop as well. Um, and uh, you can also upgrade the hard drive. Some of the things that are easier to upgrade in a desktop that's not easy to upgrade in a laptop will be things like uh, a network interface card or some type of an adapter. Um, a video card will be easier to upgrade in a desktop as well as a sound card that'll be easy to upgrade in a in a desktop I'm sorry I mean they're easier to upgrade in desktops as opposed to a laptop and the reason why that is is because the desktop is easier it comes with usually a standard type of system box, um, an ATX box as, as, as it's known. Um, in, that can either come either in a large box or in a mid-sized box or even in a, um, what we call a mini box or a small type of system box. And usually they're easy to open and once you open it you can see all of the uh, all of the parts in it, the motherboard, and all of the attachments that go with the motherboard. Now, that's not to say that you can't upgrade a laptop. You can. Um, 
it's it's a little bit more complicated because instead of usually opening it opening up a slide on the side you usually need to turn the laptop over make sure it's unplugged um, make sure it's turned off um, and there's usually a few screws in the back it can be anywhere from two three four all the way up to twelve types of screws uh, or more and you unscrew it you take off the back panel or the back plate and you'll see a lot of the uh, components there. Some of those components can be uh, accessed from the bottom there once you take off that, that back plate. Some of it has to be uh, accessed from the top of the laptop. Is It just depends upon the laptop type and model that you get. Um, and usually the only thing that you really can uh, upgrade in a laptop is going to be things like um, the memory and uh, let's see that's and the hard drive that's basically it you may be able to uh, upgrade the um, the CPU or the processor if it's not uh, um, soldered onto the motherboard or if it instead of being soldered on it is soldered on but we usually call it uh, on board which means it comes with the motherboard you can't take it out Usually that's through a uh, technology called SMT, surface mount technology. Um, that may change in the, in the following years, I'm pretty sure it will. But as of this recording, if it's uh, soldered onto the motherboard, then it's considered onboard technology, for lack of a better term. Um, you may or may not be able to swap out the uh, CPU or the core on a laptop. Um, and you know it's just it can be easy sometimes it's not sometimes on some laptops you can swap out the keyboard sometimes you can't um, it's just really iffy and it decides on your laptop and the laptop type moving on other than that you you're gonna want to also consider um, getting additional uh, equipment like you may if you have a Wi-Fi network or some type of a, um, a home network, which most homes do as of 2022, especially so that they can share broadband between the different devices, uh, you might want to consider, uh, like if you have a Wi-Fi network, most laptops and uh, even desktops and, and um, cell phones and tablets most of them come with some type of a wireless adapter. You don't really have to worry about that. However, if that wireless adapter happens to malfunction and stop working, then you're going to need to figure out what to do with it. One of the easiest things to do, especially if you have a USB attachment on your device, one of the easiest things to do is just to buy a USB wireless adapter. You buy that, you put it into your device, and then hopefully it comes with software that you can install on your laptop or your desktop or possibly even your tablet or phone. Um, they really don't come with too many uh, wireless adapters for the phone or the, the tablet. Um, they may have additional USB attachments that you can attach that um, the wireless adapter to. It just depends upon your uh, situation and the device you have. But definitely for a laptop or a desktop, you should be able to buy an additional wireless adapter, connect that, and get on your wireless network. Also, at least for the laptop and the desktop, you may have a Ethernet port, which uh, allows you to connect to a wired network. So if you have that, you're going to want to consider getting an additional Ethernet cord. Um, I provide what that looks like and the definition of that later on in this um, in this uh, ebook guide. You may want to consider getting a additional monitor. It just depends. Uh, depending on uh, what you feel like, you may want to work with more than one monitor. I know at work. We've been um, working with as many as two or three monitors. 
So you may decide you want to do that as well if you work at home. So you may want to consider getting an, a, an additional monitor. And for your broadband, to share your broadband with, uh, with other devices, you may want to consider getting an additional router or a switch or possibly even a modem, depending upon which internet service provider you're using. The one that I, the, the internet service provider that I have, uh, they, they lease out their modem to us. So you can buy your, your own uh, modem and put that on the network. You just gotta make sure that it's combat, compatible with the network of your internet service provider. So you'll need to ask your internet service provider or ISP what is compatible, which modem is compatible. It's a little less, um, uh, you don't really have to worry about it if you're buying a switch or a router. Most of them are compatible with most broadband networks anyway. The ones that you get for consumer use are. Another thing, as I've said in uh, the, first, um, the first part of uh, this guide, is you want to consider what you will be using it for. Usually, if it's for school or for work, as a 2022, usually that can be provided for you. Your job will provide you a laptop or a tablet. Same thing with your school. They usually provide that for the kids. But there are cases where they don't provide it. And it might be a case where you're, you're going to a university or one of your kids is going to university and they might have to supply their own laptop or their own device. Um, in that case, you might want to consider buying another computer. That computer doesn't always have to be brand new. You can buy a good used computer that'll do the job just as fine for your, uh, for your student. You also may want to consider buying a laptop or a desktop for video editing or for gaming. Now, for either one of these two um, um, subjects, you may want to consider buying um, a more powerful uh, machine because it's um, video editing. If you do a lot of video editing or a lot of gaming, it will require a, a more faster CPU um, and a lot more faster or a lot more uh, memory. Um, so that you can do the job that you want to do, whether it's in entertainment with gaming or video editing. So just keep that in mind. Getting something that's minimum like uh, four to eight gigs of memory is not going to help you. Um, you want to get at least is is at least sixteen to thirty two gigs as of uh, of June two thousand twenty two. You want to get as much memory as possible. Trust me. And then, like I said, the next thing you might want to consider, and these are in no particular order, um, but they're all very important. You might want to consider getting an additional uh, USB hub. That's a device that has more than one USB port. It can have anything from two to four to six. Um, usually four ports is the normal and because um, you might want to use additional USB devices um, you there are USB devices for hard drives for wireless adapters um, for all sorts of things so you'll definitely need to consider whether or not you want to get a USB hub right and as we said earlier you definitely want to want to get more USB cables for connecting different stuff. You might want to connect your a printer or a scanner. Um, and so having an extra USB cable is going to work. It's going to be very handy for you. Um, as of 2022, a lot of the laptops, not all of them, uh, but a lot of, a lot of laptops um, within the last two or three years are coming out with a USB-C type uh, uh, port and cable. Uh, this is a new hookup. Um, it's going to be standard amongst most uh, laptops, especially for the power cords. 
and the power yeah the power cords most laptops regardless of um of their of their manufacturing models whether they're hp dells um acers or or even um even um the cloud computers the um the uh chrome they're all going to be coming out with a USB C compatible uh, power cable. So, getting an extra one is going to be very helpful for you. I've used the same power cable sometimes for charging up my phone that I do for charging up my laptop. It's very convenient. So, you're going to want to consider getting an extra one for your power cord if you can. Another thing you might want to consider is getting a dock station. A dock station that's going to help you out with um, and I'll provide a link for that that's gonna that's gonna help you out with uh, oh here we go here are the dock stations right under here here's the link those are gonna help you with attaching additional um, uh, app, uh, additional hardware again you're gonna be able to attach your monitors you're gonna be able to attach extra um, uh, USB maybe yeah additional USB hubs and cables and things like that uh, we already talked about getting an extra monitor oh here's a very important thing you're gonna want to consider buying an external uh, hard drive the reason why you want to do that is because you want to start doing backups you want to start doing backups on a regular basis trust me on this Computers, I don't care how new they are, I don't care how good they are, how, how how powerful they are. Every computer eventually will run into some type of a problem, possibly even one, God forbid, that will stop you from being able to use your computer. It might not boot up, it might not start up, it might suffer from some type of a malware, some type of a virus. Before that happens, you always want to do a backup. You always want to back it up to an external hard drive, not not an extra internal hard drive, an extra external hard drive. And the difference between an internal and an external hard drive should be obvious by the word. An internal hard drive is one is an extra or a hard drive that you put into your computer. Um, you can have that you can use that for backups the problem is is that if you set that to an automatic uh, sequence where it backs up automatically once a day once a week once every other day what have you if there are um, affected files and folders it will back up that affected file and folder that'll just ruin all of your backups if you could just have an external hard drive once you go ahead and do the backup, you, maybe you don't consider doing an automatic backup. You just do it on a scheduled basis. And then once you're done with that backup, you take that external hard drive out of the system and you lock it away somewhere, preferably off site. Unless you're at home, then you may want to consider even at that, you may want to consider buying you some type of a, a, a locker system or a locked uh, or, or some type of a um, you know a chest or something that you can you can put your um, your extra backup hardware somewhere so that um, in case of theft or fire or something like that it's not on site so you may want to consider uh, putting it somewhere off site um, and again, as we were talking about earlier, here's the links to some uh, to what a network cable looks like and what wireless adapter looks like. You're definitely going to want to consider getting one of those, one of each, um, because sooner or later your computer may malfunction and not be able to get onto your network. You want you're going to want to get some extra equipment so that you can go ahead and um, get on your network. All right. And then, as we said earlier, you want to consider, do you need to buy a brand new computer, a used computer? Uh, will you buy it online or at a local store? My general rule is, if this is the first time you buy a computer, 
you probably want to go to your local store and buy one um, because what you can do is you can look at it you can see it you can mess around with it you can test it a little bit while it while you're on site at the store um, you also want to take down the information of that computer and before you buy it you want to go home with that information and do research on it online research now as we've said earlier uh, for people that say, well, what if I don't have a computer? How am I going to do online research? You can borrow your friend's computer. You can go to your friend's house and use his computer, his or her computer. You can uh, go to a family member's house and see if they'll help you out with using their computer. Uh, if push comes to shove and you don't have anything else better to do, you can always go to your local um, uh, internet shop or internet cafe or you can go to your local library. Just about every library nowadays has uh, computer systems that they allow the public to use for basic surfing. You can go on there, you can sign up for it, they'll tell you how to do all that, what their procedure is, and then you just sign up for it and you start doing the research with your favorite uh, browser and, um, and or uh, search engine. Next, another thing you're going to want to consider is uh, what type of software do you need? Um, if you're going to school or you have a job, is there specific software that they require that you have? Um, you may want to consider that when you're buying a computer. You're going to want to consider whether or not they have that on the computer when you buy it at that time. Uh, some of the software is very expensive, so if you can get it with a package deal, of any kind you want to consider doing that you also want to consider whether or not your computer if you buy it from a local store or even even a, um, a national chain you want to consider what kind of um, warranty is going to come with that computer right um, what type of warranty does it come with how long is that warranty does that warranty cover basic uh, data protection as far as doing backups will they do the backups for you are they responsible for any um, any system issues? How much responsibility do they take? All these things you're going to want to ask before you go ahead and buy that computer, right? And this right here is going to be talking about uh, how to do a research. We'll go over that in a minute. Um, let's see. And again, this is talking about getting some extra cables and stuff. Um, and then you're also going to want to consider um, how fast you need your computer. Um, if you're trying to buy a gaming computer, that's going to be very expensive. If you're trying to get a computer that you need to do video editing on, that's going to be expensive. The reason why that's going to be expensive is because it's going to be for faster hardware. It's going to be for a lot of memory. Those two things you are going to need to rely on a lot because your software is going to require a lot of memory and a lot of processing power for it to be, for it to be used and for it to process. All right. And you're not going to be able to do that on a four or eight gig memory uh, uh, laptop or, or, or uh, desktop. You're going to need the latest and the greatest. Okay. There are certain um, uh, uh, used laptops that you can max out the memory on. Um, you just need to make sure that you check the system requirements for whatever type of applications you need. Like I said, if it's video, video editing, you want to you wanna try and get at least 16 gigs worth of uh, RAM, at least a 4-core CPU, if not more, right? because these are very resource intensive applications they're going to need a lot of resources resources meaning a lot of ram a lot of uh, cpu processing and possibly even a large hard drive so if you're doing any type of specialty work you're going to need to make sure that you got enough resources to run your applications all right Another thing is you want to consider where you want to buy 
a cheap, good laptop. Um, if it's going to be used, one of the best places to buy them is off of eBay, Amazon, or even Newegg. That's a place where you can buy your computer from, a used computer. Your, your local uh, department stores may also have some used computers, or they may just sell the latest and greatest. You're going to need to check it out to see. Also, for full disclosure, I do also myself sell used uh, laptops, used computer equipment. So I provided a link to my to my uh, website. You go there, and I'll have you'll see the latest uh, uh, equipment that I have for sale. Also, you can, as you can see right here, you can go to my uh, website. I have a, a bunch of uh, free tutorials. This is a direct link to the uh, tutorials that I host. They're on YouTube. They're free for you to look at. Um, I got a lot of uh, tutorials on different uh, technologies. Most, well, mostly open source and Linux. But um, you'll definitely, you'll de if you're into that or if you're curious about that, you'll definitely want to look at my tutorials. I also have a, on my website. I have a link here provided. For, of uh, free software that you can download and use. You know, um, there's a lot of production software that's free, that's compatible with Microsoft uh, Suite that you can download and use. I suggest checking it out. Also, there are other guides that you, you can go to also on my website, and you can look at those. They should help you save money and time. I think it would be it would be worth your while to go look at them and browse through them and, and see what you can figure out. I also do computer uh, consulting. If you'd like to, you could just uh, go to my website. You'll see my contact information. Shoot me an email or maybe even send me a text or uh, leave me a voice message. So that's it. Just a few other additional information that should help you out in uh, buying your your laptop. So, I hope you I hope you uh, enjoyed this uh, video. I appreciate you looking at it. Oh, before we go, one other thing. I was going to go over again how you can look up uh, and do research on your computer or on a computer that you are uh, uh, interested in looking at. In this example, I found an HP computer, a Spectre uh, 360, and um, I went to my my favorite um, uh, search engine, which for me is DuckDuckGo. You can either use DuckDuckGo or Google or whichever is your best or, or favorite um, search engine. And I found something here on... Um, uh, the HP Spectre um, for PC Mag. PC Mag is um, is one of those uh, magazines that you, I don't know if they still have actual uh, magazines that you can look at, but they definitely have a lot of reviews on um, different equipment. You can go there and you can look at the reviews. They also they also usually have some type of a video review on the equipment as well. So just go in and type in your um, your model, your laptop model, and look through it, and you should find some reviews. One final thing that I didn't mention in uh, part one is, if you know which, t if you're looking for something like a, a Linux to put on your uh, computer, or a Linux distro to put on your computer, and you can't find anything, any other uh, types of uh, uh, reviews on it. One thing you can do, I use I, the Linux distro that I use is Linux Mint. You can go to Linux Mint, download it, put it into a uh, USB thumb drive, and make it a bootable thumb drive. Sometimes when you go on site to a department store, you may get them to let you try and reboot and use that um, that thumb drive and see if it'll boot up in Linux Mint. All right, that's a way of you seeing whether or not Linux will work on your uh, your potential computer. 
You can also do come in here and look at reviews and see if you can find any information about Linux working on your particular uh, uh, laptop or desktop. Well, that's it. So thank you very much for looking at this video. This, um, the uh, PDF version and all other applicable links will be provided in the description. I will be uh, uploading this video on both YouTube and Facebook. So thank you very much. Look forward to seeing you guys. Hope you guys have a good day. Bye-bye.